This lesson deals with the solution to exam three. You can find this exam solution near the end of the ECE 202 ebook. Exam three had four problems, each worth 25 points. This is the exam I gave when I taught the course recently, and this is the curve for exam three. 86 to 100 is an A, 74 to 85 is a B, 62 to 73 is a C, and 50 to 61 is a D. Less than or equal to 49 was not a passing grade. In problem 1A, there was a question, if a circuit is stable, what can be said about the natural poles of this circuit? Well, the natural poles of a stable circuit are located in the left half of the S-plane. Question B, what is the meaning of the word port? A port is a pair of terminals. Question C, given the impulse response, h of t is equal to 4 times e to the minus 3t u of t, can you use the convolution integral to find the zero state response if x of t is equal to 6 times e to the minus 2t times u of t? If you recall from chapter 11, the convolution integral is y of t is equal to the integral from 0 to t of h of t minus tau times x of tau d tau. We're going to place t by t minus tau in our h of t. So I have 4 times e to the minus 3 times the quantity t minus tau. And then for x of t, we have 6 times e to the minus 2t, replacing t by tau, and then d tau. Bring out the 6 times the 4, and then I have e to the minus 3t, e to the plus 3 tau, and then times e to the minus 2 tau d tau. I can pull out e to the minus 3t, it's not a function of tau, and then I can add these two exponents to get e to the tau d tau. The integral of e to the ax is 1 over a e to the ax, and here a is equal to 1, so I just have e to the tau, evaluate at the upper limit minus the lower limit. So e to the t minus e to the 0, e to the 0 is 1, so then I have 24 times e to the minus 3t times e to the t. I'm just going to add the exponent, so I get e to the minus 2t. And then multiplying this times minus 1, I get minus 24 e to the minus 3t. And that's true for t greater than 0. So I could write this then as y of t is equal to 24 times the quantity e to the minus 2t minus e to the minus 3t, all times u of t. And the last question is, given a series RC circuit, can you magnitude scale the impedance of this series circuit by 68,000? And if you do, what are the new values r and c? If you recall from our chapter 11 discussion, magnitude scaling multiplies every impedance by a scale factor, in this case 68,000. We're going to replace our resistor of 6 ohms by 6 times 68,000, and that's 408k. Capacitor, though, because its impedance is 1 over SC, we're effectively dividing the capacitance by the magnitude scale factor. So we're taking our 5 farad capacitor and dividing it by 68,000. That gives me 73.53 microfarads. This problem is worth 25 points, and the partial credit for each of the answers is listed. In problem number two, we're asked to find the voltage transfer function in the S domain. If you recall for an op-amp circuit in an inverting amplifier configuration, that the gain is equal to minus Z2 divided by Z1. Since they have two elements in parallel, let me add up their admittances and then take the reciprocal. I'll call this R1, R2, and C2. So let's do it symbolically. So C2 plus 1 over R2. That's this value, and then the reciprocal of that is our impedance Z2, and then 1 over Z1 would just be 1 over R1. Let's multiply numerator and denominator by 1 over C2. So this term I'll put up in the numerator as 1 over R1 C2. Multiplying by 1 over C2, I just get S, and then 1 over R2 C2. I'm putting in the value for R1 of 2K, C2 of 0.1 microfarad, and for R2, 100K. That gives me a minus 5K over S plus 100. Next, can you predict the output given a step of 0.1 volts. Take our transfer function, cross multiply by Vn, and now we're gonna replace Vn by a 0.1 volt step, which is 0.1 divided by S. V out in the S domain is a minus 500 over S plus the quantity, S plus 100. Since we have a proper rational function, we can write this as some K1 over S plus some K2 over S plus 100. K1 is taking our transfer function and multiplying it by S and letting S equal zero. The S's cancel and we get minus 500 over 100, and you get minus five. K2, We'll multiply the transfer function by s plus 100, and then let s equal minus 100. This cancels with this, and so I get minus 500 over s equal to minus 100, and s equal to 5. Just notice here that the values of the two residues is equal to 0. If you recall back in chapter 9, we had a theorem that said that if the power of s in the denominator was greater than the power of s in the numerator by more than 1, then the sum of the residues would be equal to 0. In this case, we have zero for the numerator and two for the denominators. K1 plus K2 is equal to zero. Another way of checking, we did the algebra correctly. So then our V out in the S domain is minus five over S plus five over S plus 100. Taking the inverse Laplace transform, I get a minus five times U of T, and then I have five times E to the minus 100 T times U of T. 
I write this as a time constant, so write the reciprocal of 1 over 100, which is 10 milliseconds. The first problem is worth 10 points, a little or no partial credit. Second problem, I broke it into three pieces, 5, 5, and 5, a total of 15. In problem number 3, we're given the voltage transfer function in the S domain, and it was equal to minus 30S over S plus 100, and we're asked to plot the magnitude and angle versus omega. We need to make this look like our forms, and so let's replace s by j omega, so minus 30 j omega over j omega plus 100. j omega is one of our terms, so I'll leave that there. Pull out the minus 30, and I've got to get a 1 over here, so pull out 100. So I'm left with 1, and then j omega divided by 100. Next, I've got to decide how many decades I'm going to need to have. I'd like to go one decade below and one decade above my extremes of my graphs. So this term, j omega, is going to be through one radian per second, so I want to start at 0.1 radians per second, and then the angle for this will be one decade above it, which would be 1k, and I'll go one decade higher, so I'm going to go to 10k. So I've got one, two, three, four, five decades, and I use about an inch for each of these decades. The first term is a form 1, next one is a form 2, and then a form 5. Now if you take the magnitude of this, you're going to get a number less than 1. The minus sign will go with the angle. Take the magnitude in dB of a number less than 1 will be negative. This turns out to be a minus 10.45, and I show that as a dotted line. And then j omega passes through one radian per second. Form five has an omega c of 100, so we'll go to 100 and then drop it 20 dB per decade. For the phase angle, I'm gonna have a minus one. I could show a plus 180 or a minus 180. Then the term j omega is just an angle of plus 90. And then my form five has an omega c of 100, so I'll be down 45 degrees at 100 radians per second. So one decade back, it's zero one decade forward, it's minus 90. Now to add these up, you need to find regions where the slopes are constant. For the first curve, to the left of this red line, this has a constant slope of zero, constant slope of 20 dB per decade, and a constant slope of zero. So I can add up those three slopes and I get a slope of 20 dB per decade. Let's find an easy point. At this frequency of one radian per second, I have a minus 10.5 for the first curve, zero for the second and zero for the third. So the sum is equal to minus 10.45. And then I'm gonna increase at 20 dB per decade. So I can construct the slope. And then when I get to this point, the slope summation is plus 20, minus 20 and zero. So we level out. There's a couple ways you can find this term 29.55. One easy way is to just take our transfer function and let S get large. And you wind up getting minus 30 S divided by S. So it's gonna be approaching 30 and 20 log of 30 is 29.55 dB. You could also use the change in slope and calculate this value based on the formulas we had in our chapter 12. Our net curve is this dark line, comes up 20 dB per decade and levels off at 100 radians per second. Our second summation is really just adding two constants to the form five, and so I've got plus 90 and minus 180, so the sum of that is minus 90. It's gonna shove down this curve by minus 90 degrees. It's gonna push it down like this. Pick the minus 180 so that when I added these two together, it would be between plus and minus 180. It doesn't make any difference if you had picked a plus 180 here. This would then just be equal to 270. For point distribution, I gave nine points for finding the three forms. Or what you found here, then graphed it, and gave eight points for each curve, and basically two points for each of the curves. So here's two for this one, two for this one, two for this one, and two for the summation. And I did the same for the angle curve. In problem number four, we're given a waveform and asked to determine whether it has no symmetry, odd symmetry, even symmetry, and or half wave symmetry. And could you use a single point to argue the case of symmetry? The point that's shown here is at four milliseconds and that actually would be one period. So let's take a look at F of T when T is equal to four milliseconds. That's equal to eight volts. I'll take a look at F of minus T. That would be at minus four milliseconds. And that would also be equal to eight volts. F of T is, is equal to F of minus T. That's one of our definitions for even symmetry. Now that's clearly not equal to the negative of the value that's here. It's no odd symmetry. Now for half wave symmetry, we need to take the term F of T minus T zero over two. Period was equal to four milliseconds. We're gonna divide that by two. And let's evaluate that when T is equal to four milliseconds. And so I'm gonna get F of four milliseconds minus two milliseconds, which is F of two milliseconds, and F of two milliseconds is equal to zero. F of four milliseconds is not the negative of F of two milliseconds, so we don't have half-wave symmetry. So when you get these contradictions, they're pretty much final, in that we've shown a single point that doesn't satisfy our definitions of symmetry. 
but when you do get an agreement with a single point, you should also check slopes or doing the mirror imaging that we did in class notes. Give nine points for the even symmetry answer and then eight points for the no odd symmetry and no half wave symmetry. And this is the solution to exam number three.